Let's start to control the flow by learning about if statements and switch statements. All right, we found us back in Telegram once more, and let's continue the Java introduction here for Minecraft modding. And as already said, we're going to talk about if statements and switch statements, and they are going to basically turn your whole world upside down. Because so far, what has been happening is that every line has been basically subsequently executed in order, right? First line seven, then line eight, then line nine, and so on and so forth, until we reach the end of the curly bracket right here, and then our program basically terminated. The only time there was maybe a sort of a wait thing was when we had to input something with the scanner. However, once all of the inputs were done, it was basically over. And now we're going to control the flow. That's why it's called basically flow control or controlling the flow of the program by introducing if statements and those are going to be absolutely freaking fantastic so first of all we're once again going to use a scanner right here so let's add the scanner as we've seen previously that's going to be system.in over here and then we can read stuff in so what we're going to ask first of all is system out print line i'm going to say how much health do you have right so let's imagine we're in a game and we have to input a health number so that's going to be an integer health and then we're going to say scanner.nextInt so we can put in an integer. And we can once again have a boolean called isAlive, which is going to be equal to health is bigger than zero. And then it's going to be true that we are alive. And now what we can do is, well, if we are alive, we can say if and then you put in a parentheses inside of the parentheses goes a boolean. Now this can be a boolean or a boolean expression. We're going to see an example of that in a second. But here we're going to put in an is alive over here in this case. And then we want curly brackets. And inside of those curly brackets, everything that is inside of these curly brackets, you can see if I go on to the first one, the second one gets highlighted as well. Everything inside of here, this will only ever get executed if this is true. So what we can say is system.out.println and I could say you are still alive. And we can test this immediately. So we can see if I were to run this and I put in health, I don't know, 12, for example, you are still alive. This is being output because 12 is bigger than zero. Is alive was true. And then it says if is alive, then we're doing this. If I were to go in here and I say uh, it's actually minus two, look what happens now. Nothing else gets output because is alive was false. Therefore, this is not being called. Absolutely freaking fantastic. But we can, of course, continue with this because let's say actually we wanted to output you are still alive if you are alive. However, if the reverse case is true, so if this is false, then we want to output something else. And else is exactly the right word. So we can write else over here and then once again put a curly bracket in. If I hit enter, the second curly bracket right here generates automatically. Everything inside of these curly brackets now is executed if is alive is false. So that is basically the reverse case of this. And there you go. Let's say you have lost the game. There we go. And if I were to run it now, I can say, you know, I've one health. Hey, you're still alive. It's all fine. However, if I'm at, you know, minus two, all of a sudden you have lost the game. And there you go. And that is the absolute power of if statements. They are basically the first building block that is insanely useful and that you're going to be using I mean, basically all the time. That's, of course, why also I highly recommend you play around with those. We'll see another example over here. So let's take a look at this. So let's say how many points do you have, right? So we can ask this. And then once again, say just int points is equal to the scanner dot next int. So we're going to read that in and we're going to say, hey, if the points are bigger or equal to 100, then we're going to system out print line. Let's say you passed with on us. Right, let's say, and then we can say else if. So now we're actually chaining together if this is false and whatever we put into this if statement is true. So let's say points have to be bigger or equal to 50. Then we're going to say system out print line you passed. And then we can end with a, an else statement over here, which is going to be system out print line. And that's going to be you failed. Because if you get below 50 points, then you failed in this case. And what we can do is, first of all, we're still alive. And then how many points did we have? Well, let's say we had 49. This means we're going to fail. And you failed. Interesting. I'm going to go through this again. We're still alive. And now we have 51, let's say. And if I were to have 100, you could see you pass with on us. Awesome. So I highly recommend you play around with the if statements because they are going to be a vital part of basically everything we're going to do continuing along with this tutorial series and then also later in Minecraft modding and Java development in general. If statements are a fundamental building block that you are definitely going to need. 
there is an alternative to the if statement, and that is the switch statement. Now, we're just going to have one tiny example of this, and that's going to be, let's say, int x is equal to 3 over here, and that's going to be for the switch statement. And usually you want to use the switch statement if you have a limited number of options that your variable can take, right? So in this case, right in the points, we had the possibility of it being bigger than 100, between 99 and 50, and then below 50, basically. Those were the three branches over here, right, that were initiated right here. And with a switch statement, you basically have to spell out each case individually. So if we want to have a switch statement of x, right, the variable x over here, we have to define each case individually. So we can say case 0, and then we can say system out print line, you know, x is 0. And then a very important, at the end over here, we need to add this break keyword otherwise it's going to execute everything afterwards so just keep that in mind and we can then say for example you know this is going to be case one case two case three and we can output different things right here and we can even have a default case which is always a great thing and that is going to be the x is unknown right and once again a break over here and there you go as you can clearly see, the issue over here is that if I were to, you know, change the if statement right here to a switch statement, well, all of a sudden, I would have to define all of the same stuff for, you know, case 0 all the way to case 49, and then from case 50 to case 99, I would have to, you know, all do the same thing. So that is absolutely ridiculous. That is why this is a crude example. However, it is still a, an important thing to have seen. Usually, you're using switch statement of things with things like enums, where there is a set number of possible values that your variable can take, right? So if, for example, even if you had something like a level variable, right? Let's say this was your level over here, and you're having a switch statement, right? If the level can only go from 0 to 5, let's say, then a switch statement would be totally fine. If it would be health, and health goes from 0 to 100, I definitely, definitely tell you not use a switch statement. Also, you cannot use switch statements for floating point numbers because floating point numbers equaling something is very rare that that actually happens because of the rounding issues that I've mentioned in the very beginning of the tutorial series. So do keep that in mind as well. Oh, with that done, that is the control flow if statements and switch statements. I cannot tell you enough how important the if statements are and also the switch statement, of course, as well. But the if statement is a foundational piece of programming, basically being able to control the flow and branch out into different parts of the code. And this can get, of course, way more complicated, which we will see in a couple of tutorials as well. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons and members on YouTube for basically making this series and a lot of my other tutorials possible. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And if you also want to support the channel, take a look at the Patreon link, or you can also support by becoming a member on this channel. Thank you so much, everyone, for your continued support. And don't worry, there are tons more topics planned. Everything from the very basics all the way to array strings, crazy stuff like that. So I'm really excited for you to follow along with this series. But for the time being, that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time, we'll talk about basic loops. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.